Good morning guys! Today I'm gonna be doing a review on the 2022 Ford Ranger Raptor. Now I know before you grilled me I am very sorry that I left you out in the dust for a few months because I was busy with my college life. But anyway, here it is. This is the review of the 2022 Ranger Raptor. Okay, so now, before anything else, I know some of you will say, isn't that supposed to be the 2021 model because the new one is the 2022? Well, yes and no, because yes, this is actually a 2021 model. Um, if you take a look at the software inside, I took a peek through 4Scan and uh, I saw that it was a 2021 model, but no, because this is the 2022 model that is um, recognized by Ford Philippines. And so essentially here in the Philippines, um, we get um, cars that are uh, one year earlier. So for example, um, like this one, 2022 model, but released in the later half of 2021. One may ask, um, so how about the new model, like the uh, facelifted model? What's the model year for that? Well, that's probably going to be the 2023 model because the new facelifted model will be released in 2022, the later half of 2022, then it's going to be the 2023 model year. So again, 2022 Ranger Raptor over here. Now I'm gonna talk about the exterior, interior, powertrain, everything special about this Ranger Raptor. I'm going to be putting um, time markers if you want to skip to a certain uh, chapter then I'm going to put that as well but first I'm going to tell you the differences with this model compared to the 2018s 2019s I'm going to tell you all the differences okay so the first one is the headlights now the headlights in here are um, actually LEDs so the low beam and the high beams are actually LEDs um, how do I know well these have like the square housings on the projectors and those indicate the LED headlights of the Raptor so if you take a look at 2018 models and 2019 models uh, they have an HID headlight which is similar to the one uh, that we have in the Everest so you'll notice the um, HID models have round projector housings compared to this one which is a square and their high beam is not LED it is a halogen unit so that's the difference so in 2018, 2019, you guys have an HID headlight, while for 2020 and above, we get this LED headlight. Another difference is the tires. Now, these are 285, 70s, R17s, BF Goodrich KO2s. So one might say, well, isn't the BFGs um, the original tires for the Ranger Raptor? And yes, it is, but I think there was actually a supply issue with BFG back in the day. And so the 2018s had the BFGs, but uh, 2019 to 2020 um, switched to Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax. Now, um, it's not really an, an issue for me, but uh, Goodyear doesn't really have a good uh, reputation here, especially with the Goodyear Efficient Grips, the one in our Everest. Those were prone to uh, the sidewall bulging, so it didn't really get a good reputation. But, you know, Goodyear Wranglers are one of the best tires in the world. Uh, I don't really care about BFG or Goodyear, which is better. Both are good. I just prefer the BFG for its looks because it looks really good and I prefer the Goodyear for its um, for its wet performance. So the BFGs do get li a little slippery in the wet, I must admit that. Again, 2018, they have the BFGs, 2019-2020, they have the Goodyears. For 21 onwards, they have the BFG KO2s. Another notable difference with the new Ranger Raptors is the color. Now, uh, the Ranger Raptor comes in five colors. This one is a true red, you've got your Conquer Gray, you've got your Arctic White, Absolute Black, and Performance Blue. Now, um, I'm going to be talking about the Performance Blue model specifically because the Performance Blue is actually a new color during the 2020 model onwards. So basically, the older models had Lightning Blue or Blue Lightning, I don't know which one, but Blue Lightning came for the 2018 to 2019 models and it was changed to a Performance Blue during the 2020 model upwards. So basically, the Performance Blue is kind of like a more um, diluted blue, kind of a more subtle blue, while the Blue Lightning was actually a more vibrant, more in-your-face blue compared to the blue of 2020. And if you take a look at the inside, okay, let me just open this. Okay, so if you see over here, the railings of the seat do not have covers anymore. So basically the 2021 model onwards, they don't have this, um, the cover on this 
um, seat railings. So, yeah, that's a bummer, but you know, it's a little thing that I don't really mind. Another thing is the floor mats. Now, this these are um, different floor mats, but um, the original Raptors um, supposedly had um, unique Raptor mattings that have Raptor embroidered onto the floor mats itself but during the 2021 model year onwards they decided to remove um, the Raptor branding so it's just a basic floor mat with blue stitching and then for the rears they decided to remove it completely so the 2021 model did not have any rear floor mats until 2022 this one this one had rear floor mats but still no branding but then again didn't really matter because I changed them with these um, car mat king floor mats they're very good um, they uh, catch water well especially if you spill a drink or something very good compared to these sock floor mats now another difference is going to be the sun visors so um, these are just basic sun visors uh, but back in the day 2018 2019 2020 they had illumination so now they're just um, bare it doesn't have any lighting on it from the 2021 model onwards so that's the difference and then what other difference could I remember now there is one major difference with this new model compared to the older Raptors because this has autonomous emergency braking. So essentially, um, if you are in a scenario where you're about to crash, this will know and it will um, brake and prevent you from colliding with that vehicle. And the reason for that is there is a front-mounted camera over there. If you can see that little trapezoidal um, cut out on the uh, windshield that is the front camera and it's not for dash cam purposes although it would have been nice if it could have that capability but basically that little camera right there scans the road sees um, pedestrians and cars and if um, the car in front of you suddenly stops it will be able to recognize that and if you don't respond to the audible and uh, physical warnings then it will automatically break for you now again, I've said pedestrians because this also has pedestrian detection. Um, one time in an intersection, uh, I thought it was clear, but then a pedestrian just popped right out of uh, the intersection and ran in the middle of the street without even looking. So this guy noticed that and it automatically braked, preventing me from hitting that poor pedestrian. I mean, guys, you have to be responsible when you are um, crossing the street. You all have to look left and right and left again to make sure that there are no vehicles around. The major difference from the 2022 to 2021 is just the removal of the CD player. So if you take a look at the inside over here, there's no more CD player. So basically I've read from a review in Australia, Ford is essentially trying to remove features on the newer ones to prevent price increases on their new models. So, I mean, that's a good thing. Personally, it doesn't really affect me. I don't really need the CD player. I don't really need the illuminated vanity mirrors, but you know, it would have been nice to have all of those features um, without a price increase, but it doesn't really matter to me anyways. So now let's go to the most controversial part the powertrain of the Ranger Raptor. So let me just open the hood. All right, so my gimbal just died. I'm gonna do it handheld for you, but that's no problem because this one has hood struts that carry the weight of the hood, and it's very awesome. I also have that in the Everest. It is very convenient to have those hood struts. Anyway, so this is the heart, the two liter bi-turbo eco blue diesel engine that produces 213 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. It is mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now I know there are a lot of issues with this vehicle, but for the 2021, uh, model onwards they have essentially rectified all of the issues so basically in 2018 they had a fuel injector problem they replaced that and then in 2019 to 2020 there were transmission issues basically the gear in the oil pump um, essentially breaks and essentially the uh, transmission loses drive um, so that was replaced and that was rectified for the 2021 model onward. So basically, from my research, I have seen quite a lot of Ranger Raptors in the 2019-2020 model year that had their transmissions um, broken. But 
the transmission numbers in those model years were actually 40, 43, 44. I'm not sure about, sure about 45, but I'm pretty sure um, it's not 42. That transmission number is in this exact vehicle. So how do you know what transmission number you have? So if you take a look at the transmission over here, if you can see, you can see the number two. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the number two. And if you crawl underneath the um, transmission at the bell housing, you will be able to see the number um, engraved into the bottom. So you can see it's number 42. So basically, if you're buying a Raptor used, try to skip the 2019 to 2020 models. Now, I'm not scaring um, the owners of these vehicles, but essentially, not all from 2019 to 2020 were faulty. So basically, there was only a batch. I think that was the later half of 2019 to the earlier batch of 2020s. That's the thing to look out for. But otherwise, the power in this thing is absolutely great. It is very smooth, very refined. And this is due to the new belt in oil drive system. Now, basically the belt is already inside the engine. It's lubricated by oil. So the belt is going to experience less friction and therefore less vibration, less noise, and better fuel economy. But reliability-wise, that is kind of a concern because belt in oil doesn't really sound good to me. But just change your oil regularly and change the belt earlier than the manufacturer recommends. I think it's about 200,000 kilometers, correct me if I'm wrong, but you should change that earlier than that um, because I'm pretty sure that's gonna snap before you reach 200,000 kilometers. So just do proper maintenance on that thing and it, it will serve you well, I can tell you that. Now, the nice thing about having this vehicle for a long time is because um, you get to know the vehicle quite well. And compared to like reviewers that only have these vehicles for like a week or a month, um, they can't really tell you on the, on the long term how this thing performs. Um, the advantages of owning a vehicle is actually you can review it as your own and um, you can see um, what has gone wrong with it. In 3,000 kilometers, I can tell you what has gone wrong with it, which is absolutely nothing. It has been awesome. I'm not shitting on um, reviewers or anything, but um, an advantage to having this vehicle is for you guys to actually ask me how is the Raptor so far? How many months um, have you owned it? How many kilometers have you driven on it? All of the YouTubers out there who are who are reviewers, I really, really admire you, especially Kako from Autodeal and all the others. Um, they have inspired me to kind of review as well, even though I don't really have any connections with, the ve with other vehicles, but I'm going to be reviewing our vehicles from time to time. Now, let's go to the mechanical, shall we? Let's go to the suspension, all right? So the Raptor comes with uh, Fox shocks. So they're 2.5 inch diameters. They are internal bypass Fox performance shocks. So basically they are very, very good for off-roading, especially in high speed off-roading situations where you have to jump this vehicle. These shocks have position sensitive damping. And so essentially when you're going slow on slower bumps, it's not really going to stiffen up. But if it senses that you're going to jump, then it's gonna stiffen up like mad and it's going to be absorbing that bumps because the Raptors actually do not have they do not have bump stops, if you can see that. So basically, the shocks act as um, the bump stop. It dampens according to your speed, according to the position of the shocks, especially when you're in mid-air where it's on fully droop, it's going to definitely tighten up. So basically, that's the same with the rears, but the difference with the rears is that the rears actually have an external reservoir. If you can see that over there, there we go, there's the external reservoir. So that's just mainly the difference, but both are still internal bypass, both are very good. However, the rear is a bit stiffer because it has stiffer coils to at least carry about 700 kilograms. Main mechanicals, 285 70 R17s uh, with BF Goodrich tires. It has 17 by 9 um, jump rated uh, wheels. And then, of course, the Fox shocks. Okay, let's just let that pass for now. <laughs> Anyways, two and a half inch Fox shocks. Just a little bit of trivia. This one is actually not um, iron or steel. This is actually aluminum. So this is cast aluminum over here, lower control arm. The upper control arm, I think you can see that over here, that is actually a forged aluminum upper control arm. So it's not steel, not iron, not anything else. And then it has four wheel disc brakes, front and rear. Front is ventilated, rear is solid. So basically that is the mechanicals of the Ranger Raptor. So exterior, 
this is the most controversial part. This one over here, the panel here is actually composite material. This is actually dent resistant, but it's again, dent resistant, not dent proof. So essentially it is actually quite tough and it's actually very flexible compared to, um, compared to steel. But the main downside is if you puncture that, it's gonna be very difficult and very expensive to replace. Essentially, this is going to be more resistant than your steel counterparts but the main problem is again replacement and repair of that if it breaks so that's for your information again the Ford signature grill LED headlights you've got your bumper over here you've got your LED fog lights and then down here you've got your aluminum skid blade over here over here you've got a this is actually a real vent you can actually poke a car wow stick of truth um, let's just see so I have a car wow stick of truth over here I can stick that in with no problems it's just a little bit too small for this hole, but yeah, that is real. Now down here, you've got your magnesium um, step board. So this can actually carry the weight of the vehicle. Very, very strong. Over here, you've got your dino gray um, accents on the door handles, on the vent, on this uh, fender flare, and the mirror. Then you've got your Raptor badging over here. So essentially, um, people will ask, why is the Raptor so wide? Well, it's essentially because the suspension is wider by six inches. So basically, the body has to um, has to support that suspension. I mean, in in Australia, they're not allowed to have wheels that poke out a lot. So basically, this is needed. Here in the Philippines, though, as wide as you go, there is no regulation for it. But it is um, something that LTO should consider. But anyways, um, that is why it's very wide. This though is steel, so it's not composite material. Raptor branding, got your halogen taillights. I just uh, replaced them with LEDs. Raptor badging over here, Ford Ranger badging over there. You've got your tailgate. This one is actually um, damp because I installed a GT Pro tailgate assist. But from the factory, it does have a torsion bar over here that is your tailgate assist and it makes this, um, it makes opening and closing this thing much, much easier because it's very, very light. Now you've got your bumper over here. You've got your um, tow hooks that are actually rated for 2,500 kilograms. And then basically that's the exterior. And then over here in the bed, we've got your drop-in bed liner that comes stock with the factory. Except for these bed rails, I installed this one because the stock Raptors do not have these bed rails. So there's the third brake light, there's the antenna for the radio, and then underneath the third brake light, there are, cab uh, there are uh, bed lights. So when you're loading at night, you have your handy lights over there. And then over here, you've got your fuel door of course it's a diesel there we go now this um, little circle over here is supposed to be for add blue but because the Philippines does not require add blue this is grayed out and we do not have add blue functionality in the Philippines okay so so much for the exterior let's go to the interior all right so we are inside the Ranger Raptor now if you've noticed it is very very similar to the Rangers and Everest of this um, generation Others may not know it, but the Ranger Raptor is actually based on the XLT. That's why um, the Raptor has these dials instead of the double screen um, setup on the Wildtrak. And that also explains why the Raptor lacks a little bit of features compared to the Wildtrak, but it is still actually pretty well equipped for the price. Now over here, you've got your instrument cluster with two red needles, of course, another two needles for your um, temperature and your fuel gauge, and then you've got a screen in the middle. And then over here, you've got your very, very nice steering wheel, typical Ford steering wheel with the addition of paddle shifters, a 12 o'clock marker, perforated um, leather material, and just standard synthetic leather material over here. Now down here, you've got your controls for the screen. This controls the screen. Over here, you've got your cruise control button. So basically, this is um, just a regular general cruise control. Doesn't have adaptive cruise control, which is a bummer, but I don't really use it because I'm always in the city. And then this one is your mode selector. So currently, I'm in normal. There's sport, there's grass, grass snow, rock, Baja, and mud and sand. And then this one is the buttons for your Sync 3 infotainment. I'm gonna talk about that real quick later. Controls for your audio tracks, so you wanna skip or you wanna go back, or you could actually use these buttons to answer or reject a call. So beside that, there's your voice recognition. You've got your mute, volume up and down. So basically that's that. And Raptor badging. 
Over here, we've got the kinda okay Sync 3 infotainment screen, 8 inch from um, this corner to this corner, 8 inches. It's actually still very responsive, but um, during this time, um, it is kind of getting a little bit outdated already. Now, I'm sure others will say it's good enough. Well, yeah, it's good enough, but it's kind of lacking behind already compared to the D-Max and other competitors. They have bigger screens now. And, you know, you shouldn't worry because the next one is going to have an even bigger um, infotainment screen than this one. And there are already leaks to prove that. And so I'm very, very stoked to um, hear that news. But for now, 2022 model here in the Philippines, you only get the Sync 3 infotainment system. Very good. I love it. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, very responsive. Now down here, let me just adjust. Down here, you've got, again, the lack of the CD player. You've got your forward and back track pause and play buttons you've got your volume knob you've got your tuning knob you've got your dual zone climate controls over here that's that and the most important button um, here in the philippines max ac i love this button especially if you're parked under the sun anyways over here you've got one usb port here and 12 volt port on the other side now down there you've got another usb port some storage for something else like coins and anything you'd like to put over here, you've got, let me just remove this. <laughs> this is really cumbersome. Okay, so this is actually your traction control um, button. You've got your rear differential lock button and your hill, con um, hill descent control button. Over here, you've got your four-wheel drive um, gear selector. So if you want to go to four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive, you can just um, turn that. Over here, you've got your gear shifter, PRNDM. So just your typical gear shifter. Mechanical handbrake over here, two cup holders for your junk. Now that I've put away all my junk in the back, these seats are very, very good. They're very bolstered. As you can see, the bolstering in the sides are just absolutely massive. And I've just recently took a trip um, to Malay Balay and I've, I've been on a trail there. And uh, this seat, or well, these seats in the front are very supportive. And regardless of how fast you corner, how bumpy the trail gets, this will catch you wherever your body plans to go during corners so basically it's a very supportive seat i love it i don't think these are ricaros though but they are very very good seats they have a suede material in the middle and then they've got the leather all around with blue stitching over here and the raptor logo so i would love to have these in the everest i think i'm going to retrofit these seats on the everest as soon as i can get one with powered seats because of course only the driver seat is powered. It's an eight-way power adjustable, front and back, up and down. You've got your leg support up and down, and then you've got your forward and recline. But the passenger seat is only a four-way manual, so that's a bummer for Ford. Now, as you can see, I'm at the back of the Ranger Raptor now, and it's actually very spacious for a pickup truck. This is my driving position, and this is the amount of space um, between my knees and the back of the seat is actually quite a big, um, quite a big space. I mean, I have tons and tons of legroom down here, and it is really, really comfortable. Now, this is due to the cutouts at the back of the seat. As you can see, it cuts into the back of the seat, which allows for more space for taller drivers and passengers. So it's very, very comfortable. Now, as for amenities, you have nothing really aside from um, a 230 volt outlet over here and a 12 volt outlet and no air conditioning, but you still get that nice leather seats over here. You've got um, your suede material in the middle and then you've got your synthetic leather all around with blue stitching similar to the ones in the front. Of course, you've got your leather armrests with the same blue stitching. So over here, you've got your armrest. If you don't have a third passenger in the middle, you can bring down this armrest and have additional two cup holders over here, which is very nice. All right driving the Ranger Raptor hope you can hear me the air conditioning is quite loud it's very very hot outside but anyways driving the Ranger Raptor I just love it you know the suspension of this thing is very very smooth and I don't really have any concerns with anything I mean the engine is smooth it revs nice the transmission shifts smoothly during the earlier days of owning the, uh, this vehicle, I noticed that the uh, transmission was a bit of a, a bit jerky, you know. But I've read the manual and it says, you know, the engine and transmission is still calibrating. It's common to have these issues when you are 
um, still under 2,000 kilometers. So uh, that is one thing to consider. Um, I've uh, I've also talked to an owner who had the same issue, and uh, he still has a very low mileage. And I just told him that that is normal for the vehicle. And then now that I have 3,000 kilometers already on the clock, it is very smooth already. No more uh, jittering motions. No more. Um, rough shifts so essentially there were a couple of rough shifts uh, before but now gone spotless shifts effortless shifts Your engine very smooth very quiet because of the new again built-in oil drive system two turbos really good power transmission really smooth um, you've got the tires very quiet I was actually very surprised with the BFGs because they are very very smooth very very quiet especially during highway speeds they're not noisy at all. I mean, I, I love mud tires, okay? We have mud tires on um, most of our SUVs. But this one, this is an all-terrain tire, but it doesn't feel like it because it feels like a highway tire. It's very smooth, very, very quiet. Although, I have one gripe about the tires. They're very slippery um, during the wet. I think some of you will agree. I'm planning on changing tires. Um, if you have any recommendations, um, please do comment down below because I have tried a lot of tires in my lifetime Cooper STT Pros. I've got Delium Terra Warriors, Comforcer CF 3000s. I've got I've tried Westlake. I've tried Bridgetones. I've tried Toyos So really I wanted to go find another brand that I would like those brands that I've mentioned were actually pretty good And now I'm trying to find another good brand fuel economy wise you know this isn't the perfect car to be talking about fuel economy because you have big tires and as Jay Walker said it's aerodynamically shaped like a barn <laughs> essentially because it has flat face essentially so um, it's not really good but it's not spell uh, it's not really bad either now with a heavy foot in the city I could achieve about six to seven kilometers per liter if I would be a little bit more careful with my gas uh, with my accelerator pedal maybe I could get eight to nine kilometers per liter now on the highway that's a different story because if you're gunning it you're you can get about like seven kilometers per liter if you're like flooring it like all all the way but um, during highway speeds you can actually reach um, about 14 15 the most 16 kilometers per liter um, at 100 kilometer rolls at 1,900 rpm overall I love everything about this vehicle except maybe for the features and the tires but again not a really a deal breaker for me because it already has autonomous emergency braking it already has these good seats it already has rear backup cameras and rear sensors you know you've got very soft suspension no complaints here whatsoever and you know guys don't follow me in the sense that you buy you buy a car that you don't test drive okay <laughs> I've met a lot of people who have regretted their decision in buying a car because they bought this and that they, they should have bought this and that and you know a car is a big investment not cheap it's not cheap uh, so you have to know your options you have to weigh your options you have to research about it ask the owners about it how they are um, what commonly breaks or uh, how much is the maintenance you know you have to ask everything about that and luckily um, all of the owners that I've asked this fits us the best all right guys so that marks the end of the review of this 2022 Ranger Raptor SRP this thing costs 1.88 something million Philippine pesos in 2018 but they increased their price to 1.988 million Philippine pesos and because they don't offer these um, with insurance anymore from Ford CDO we bought it at 2.1 million Philippine pesos because that's including your freight and your insurance very expensive car but I think it's kind of worth it you know it's um, very capable it, it, it goes off-road quite well I've tested that um, in Malay Balay I loved it it can carry 700 kilos which is bad in terms of um, all of the other leaf sprung pickup trucks but in terms of daily usage we never actually got to use the full 700 kilogram capacity of the Raptor so I am very pleased with this just a little fact, I, um, from my previous video, I, I said that I bought this because um, the D-Max had a 123,000 um, price difference, but now DTI actually just removed safeguard tariff. So basically, that comparison does not um, hold up anymore, but 
if you're gonna ask me, well, then do you regret spending more on this? Um, no, really. I love the ride, I love the seats, I love the capability, the engine is good, the transmission is good, tires, um, a bit disappointing in the wet, but they're pretty good off-road and um, on-road on the, in the dry. Suspension, very, very soft, and the um, protection underneath, the skid blades, very, very good. Um, I just love this vehicle, I mean, it just, uh, it just turns heads no matter where you go, even if this was like the same design from 2018, but it still turns heads and that's what I love about this vehicle. I mean, anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, please do give me suggestions on my future videos. If you have a Ranger Wild Track as well and you are from CDO, um, if you have a 2022 model Ranger Wild Track, I would love to compare this with the Wild Track to inform other people which one to buy again thank you very much for watching this is not possible without you guys so thank you and I will see you in the next one talk to you guys later <laughs>